Breaking the wall of spintronics. Qualified in the Bay Area Lab, Sinead Griffin, University of California, Berkeley, USA. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, computing is facing a crisis. It's been a long time since we've actually been able to keep up with Moore's law. And this is because semiconductor and silicon-based technologies have a fundamental limit. We got, we're going to have to think of new ideas in order to make our technologies both smaller and more energy efficient for the next generation of materials. Well, actually, scientists and most, most importantly, physicists have had an idea of how to solve this for over 100 years with the discovery of magnetism. Now, magnetism is a seemingly mysterious phenomenon where two objects can be extraordinarily attracted to each other without even needing a dating app. Well, magnetism is explained by a property of the electron called its spin. And this spin can have two values. It can be spin up or spin down. We can use then this spin to encode the usual zeros and ones that we use in our binary bits and computation. Now, spin-based technologies, or spintronics, aims to both replace and augment existing technologies by using this spin degree of freedom. This offers several advantages over our charge-based electronics, for example, in silicon. For starters, if we use spin in addition to charge-based electronics, we can quadruple the storage capacity of existing technologies. In addition to this, using magnetic fields to control the materials, we can or decrease the energy consumption of these by up to 60% in 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 instead of using electric fields for, for uh, solving this problem. Now, this may seem like a panacea of properties, and there is a catch. Finding good spintronic materials is difficult because these are difficult to synthesize and they're very rarely occurring in nature. What my discovery was, a whole new class of spintronic materials that can already be synthesized in the laboratory. I did this by performing quantum mechanical simulations on a wide range of materials. In doing this, I was able to first understand the underlying physical mechanism of how this worked in this particular class of materials, and then went on to explain and discover and make a prediction in which sort of materials this can actually occur in. In particular, this is the crystal structure that I was discovered this effect in, and the mechanism is related to stretching the C-axis of this material. When I stretch it, the, the electron spin behaves in a particular way that makes it useful for spintronic devices. Questions? In doing so, I was able to actually predict 15 new spintronic materials that were previously unknown. Now, this not only opens up a new route to using this type of material in spintronics, in both augmenting over there. and replacing our existing charge-based electronics. How many yes. of these 15 have you then synthesized? So one has been synthesized so far. I'm a theoretician, but another laboratory has synthesized one of them so far and has um, attained the signal that Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.